Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I would like to discuss the kinetic theory of gases. This theory is important in understanding the behavior of gases in general and if you wish to gain insight into what astronomers have done relative to the formation of the stars and black holes using gravitational collapse. These topics will be covered in separate presentations, but we need a little more formation in thermodynamics first. Imagine an ideal gas in a sealed adiabatic cavity possessing a piston which can do pressure volume work. The gas atoms occupy a small space compared to the container and move fast colliding with the walls and with each other. The total energy of this system is equal to its total internal energy U which in turn is equal to the total kinetic energy of motion of the gas atoms given by 1 half nm v bar squared. In this equation n represents the number of particles m the mass of an individual atom or molecule and v bar the average velocity. The internal energy would rise in this system by compressing the gas which requires work. No heat energy is present in the walls of this system since they are adiabatic. Imagine locking our piston into place such that no work can be done on the gas and raising the cavity far above the earth. In this scenario, the internal energy of the gas will not change. The system did not exchange heat and the piston did not do work on the system. Therefore, the temperature of the gas inside the cavity does not change simply because we elevated the cavity. Instead, the entire cavity gains potential energy. Therefore, the total energy of the system is equal to its total internal energy plus the potential energy from being raised. Notice that gravity cannot change the internal energy of a system. We can now lower the cavity and place it back onto the earth. A crucial note for future videos. An isolated gas which is not in the presence of another body cannot possess any potential energy. A gas's internal energy is the kinetic energy of motion and it is why free gases usually expand to fill the void. Next, let's discuss degrees of freedom. This is how we represent the configuration and position of a body. A single gas atom can have a total of three translational degrees of freedom along the x, y, or z directions, with no rotational or vibrational degrees of freedom. A diatomic molecule like hydrogen has seven degrees of freedom, the same three translational degrees of freedom, and also two rotational degrees of freedom along the two axes which are orthogonal to its interatomic bond. Finally, a diatomic molecule also has two vibrational degrees of freedom which arise from a single vibrational mode. The equipartition principle states that the energy is distributed equally into the available degrees of freedom. Each degree of freedom contributes one half kT to the total energy of the system where k is Boltzmann's constant and T is the absolute temperature in Kelvin. Therefore, if you consider a single atom in a monoatomic gas, its total energy is equal to 3 halves kT since it has three possible degrees of freedom. Conversely, a diatomic molecule like hydrogen has a total energy equal to 7 halves kT since the presence of a bond between the two atoms creates four additional degrees of freedom. Since the total energy of our system is equal to the kinetic energy of motion, 1 half nm v bar squared, and also equal to 3 halves nkt, then the RMS velocity of the particles will be equal to the square root of 3 kt divided by m, where k is Boltzmann's constant, t is the absolute temperature, and m the mass of an individual atom or molecule. Note that changes in the root mean squared velocity are governed by changes in the square root of the absolute temperature, since k is a constant, and since the mass of an individual atom or molecule is an intensive property of the system which does not vary with the number of particles and therefore also behaves as a constant. We note with rearrangement that temperature is an intensive property of our system as required by the zeroth law. Interestingly, the equipartition of energy in our degrees of freedom also give us another quantity, what is known as the heat capacity, which is how much heat our system can hold at a given temperature. Heat capacity is equal to the change in internal heat delta Q relative to the change in temperature delta T. Heat capacity is an extensive property of a material. The more material, the greater the heat capacity. Alternatively, we could speak in terms of heat capacity per mole of gas. In that case, we are referring to specific heat capacity which is an intensive property. Heat capacity is typically expressed either in terms of constant volume, C sub V, or constant pressure, C sub P. 
For the sake of not getting bogged down in the math, I will simply jump to the conclusion. The specific heat capacity at high temperatures in an ideal monoatomic gas at constant volume is equal to 3 halves R, where R is equal to the constant in the ideal gas law. This corresponds to about 3 calories per mole per degree. For a diatomic gas, the specific heat capacity at constant volume and high temperatures is equal to 7 halves R, which corresponds to about 7 calories per mole per Kelvin. In practice, of course, Heat capacities deviate from the behavior predicted by the ideal gas law, especially at low temperatures in the diatomic gas, where contributions from vibrational degrees of freedom are thought to be less significant in practice. By rearranging our equation for heat capacity, we see that a positive heat capacity means that added heat increases temperature. For solids at high temperatures, the heat capacity tends to be about 6 calories per degree. This finding can be attributed to the law of Dulon and Petit, and is presented in this figure. We can also note that heat capacities tend to fall as temperature is decreased. In fact, at absolute zero, the heat capacity of a system is zero. I hope that you enjoyed this video on the kinetic theory of gases, heat capacity, and the energy of a gaseous system. If you did, please leave a like. In addition, subscribe if you want to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.